Hello and welcome. I'm Millicent Walker. Tonight, Lagos High Court sentences two men to death by hanging for murder of Cynthia Sokogo on July the 22nd, 2012. Irish youth of Owade at their town in Oshun State clash with police after petrol truck runs over students of Federal Polytechnic Ede. United States Secretary of State Rex Tillerson asks countries facing terrorism challenges to take a cue from Nigeria on how to win the war against global terrorism. And police in London identify attacker at Westminster as 52-year-old British-born Khalid Massoud from Kent. And in business news tonight, market scares Zenith Bank from 100 billion Naira new capital raising. And on sports news tonight, federal government tips youth sports festival as talent development blueprint for future Olympics. And from Abuja, Supreme Court fixes May 4th as day to hear motion challenging appeal filed by Ahmed Markafi led National Caretaker Committee of the People's Democratic Party. Begin in Lagos, where a state high court has convicted and sentenced two men, Okumo Nwabufo and Olise Lukai Zike, to death by hanging for the murder of Cynthia Osokogu, a postgraduate student of Nasara State University, on the 22nd of July 20, 2012. Well, Justice Olabisi Akinlade sentenced the two men to death after the prosecution had successfully proven against the two defendants the offences of conspiracy to kill, murder, and stealing. Our judiciary correspondent, Shola Shuele, has more. Five years after they were first charged, the Lagos High Court, sitting in the Igbo-Shere area of Lagos Island, has finally given a judgment in the murder case of the late Cynthia Osokogu. The facts of the case, as we now know it, is that the 23-year-old postgraduate student of Nasarawa State University was lured to Lagos by a man she met and became friends with on a social media platform, Facebook. The man, 33-year-old Okuomo Nwabufu, promised to help her buy cheap goods for her boutique. But the actual plan was to steal all her money and valuables. And so he procured his nephew, 23-year-old Olisai Loka Ezike, the second defendant, to purchase the air ticket to Lagos. It was the second defendant he also sent to buy the chains and sellotape used to gag and choke the victim. He went ahead to secure a room at a hotel in Festac Town area of Lagos. A third defendant, a pharmacist, Ojo Sita, allegedly sold to them a drug which was to be used to sedate the victim. And a fourth defendant, the younger brother to the second defendant, was given the task of selling off the victim's phones. These, in a nutshell, was the case of the prosecution against the four men who stood trial before Justice Olabisi Akinladi. In the course of the five-year trial, ten prosecution witnesses testified, and the four testified, each in their own defense. From the testimony and exhibits placed before the court, Justice Akinade came to the following conclusions. That Cynthia Osokogu died. According to the pathologist who testified for the prosecution, the cause of death was asphyxia, which was not self-inflicted. Asphyxia, an absence of oxygen supply to the body, was caused by the choking and gagging of the diseased. Even though there was no eyewitness account of her death, Justice Akinade held that by relying on the evidence of the pathologist and a series of circumstantial evidence largely provided by the hotel staff and the men of the Nigerian Police Force Area E, and the confessional statement of the two defendants, she was satisfied that the prosecution had proved the offense of conspiracy and murder beyond reasonable doubt. On the charge of conspiracy to steal and stealing, the court held that the first and second defendant intended to permanently deprive the victim of her valuables, and it was in the process that they callously stole her life. She pronounced them guilty. The court acquitted and discharged the third and fourth defendants on the basis that the prosecution had not successfully proved the case against them. The two convicts were led straight into the waiting prison van. The prosecution declined to comment on the case, but here's how one of the defense counsel reacted. Certainly, we're going to apply for a certified copy of the judgment. We're going to study it. We're going to liaise with our clients. We're going to sit with them. 
whether to accept the judgment or to appeal the judgment. The lessons from these judgments are enormous, but it bears reinforcing that some people are not who they claim to be on social media and everyone will do well to exercise extreme caution in their social media interactions. Shola Shieli, Channels Television News. And some youths from Owade Ede town in Oshun State have taken to the streets to protest the death of one of them, a student of the Federal Polytechnic Ede. The student was said to have been killed by a fuel tanker whom the youths accused of reckless driving. They are also accusing the police of helping the driver escape. Irate youths take to the streets of Owodiede in Oshu State to protest the death of one of them, a young man in his 20s who is said to have been knocked down by a field tanker. There was a boy called Dada. He went to one Bukatiria to buy, to buy food. So he wanted to cross. So there was a, a trailer come all the way from uh, Akuda Road. He knocked the boy down and attempted to run away. The youths are angry. They say this is not the first time this is happening in their town and much worse how the police handled the matter. The mother, the grandmother, you heard the news, the, the, she lives here, you know what they are. Oh, you the news, she faints. And by now, she has passed out. What really makes all the youth be annoyed is that they take the motor and the driver to some level, right? On reason there, they started beating the, the people. It's all good. They started beating the youth. The police went. To put a stop to this, they are asking for the construction of speed breakers in the length of the major road through the town. We need, need uh, from government, assistance from government. We need bomb here because this always it, it is continuously happened. Not only today, if it happened to me, let's say past for uh, past four years now, that happened to me personally. So please, we need government assistance here. The impact of this death, these youths say, is enormous. But to avoid a recurrence, there may be need to also relocate roadside markets. It's been a day of protests at the Arik Air office in Lagos as aviation unions and staff of the airline clashed over differences in airline operations. Aviation union workers trooped out to demonstrate against the current management whom they have described as intolerant of unionism, particularly concerning members' dismissal. However, some staff members of the airline also staged a protest denouncing the action of the aviation workers' unions, which they described as detrimental to the fortunes of Arik. Aviation union members chanting within the General Aviation Terminal from where Arik operates. Empty Arik check-in counters. Stranded passengers seated, most of them upset and unwilling to speak. Away from the terminal to the airline's headquarters, where other members of the union are blocking the gates, representatives of the union tell us their grouse. The receiver manager is trying to be a little bit stubborn at the moment. Uh, he even said that uh, the ARIC has a zero to tolerance on the union, and we have our members here. The ill treatment that is given to our members here, we have had enough, and that is why we have to take the bull by the horn. Within the airline's office grounds, this group of staff members say they are not standing with the union. They are trying to ruin our daily bread for our families and for our future. These people are out of job for over 15 years. They want us to be like them. This is why we stand here and say no to that insensitivity. They are out there for what they will get for their pockets. We are here for working for a company that will pro present the image of Nigeria, that will project the image of our people as a great nation. While the two groups are on different pages, the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority is holding mediated talks as the regulator believes the airline's business must not be disrupted. Our interest is that the organization should allow to function. 
should be allowed to operate because it's like a teacher and student. If you have teachers and there are no students, you have no reason to be there as a teacher. So we are here as a regulatory body. If there is no airline operating, then we have no business being here. So we have to work and ensure that the airline survive and remain in business and succeed. As most sectors of the economy remain hit by the recession, industry players are asking warring parties to sheath their swords for the progress of the aviation industry. Bukola Ju Okitsumbi, Channel Television News. Well, staying with the aviation sector, in spite of the pass mark given by the Minister of Information on the operations at the Kaduna Airport, the House of Representatives has directed its Committee on Aviation to ascertain the operational safety at the airport. The decision by the House was, however, opposed by some lawmakers who argued that the Abuja Airport will soon be operational. Our correspondent, Larry Lassisi, has more. third week since the Kaduna International Airport began handling air traffic that would ordinarily have been for the Innamdi Azikiwe International Airport Abuja. Despite assurances from relevant authorities that the Kaduna International Airport is ready and safe, this House of Representatives member says there are safety concerns. Thirdly, the House notes and the House is disturbed that there are allegations that fueling installations and procedure at the Kaduna International Airport grossly falls short. Grossly falls short of international standard and pose grave danger to employees, passengers, and the general public. It's further notes and disturbed that some aviation marketers have been allegedly transferring Jet A1 products from bulk road tankers directly into fuel bowsers right on the tarmac at the Kaduna International Airport and discharging same into commercial aircraft. A lively debate follows. When I flew into Kaduna, I realized that that site to me is more like a construction site. And where you see construction going on and planes are landing, I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, God forbid, that is more like crisis in waiting. Let us finish the three weeks. We will not die by the grace of God. And we will not play to the guy who should have taken these steps prior to now. If we fail to do it, we will not do it now. Let them continue. I will continue to pray. After six weeks, we'll come back to Abuja. The motion was then put to a vote. Those in favor of the motion as amended say aye. aye. Those against it say nay. The ayes have it. The House has directed its committee on aviation to ascertain if industry standards are being complied with at the Kaduna International Airport. The committee is also to assess the extent of work done so far at the Innamdi Azikiwe International Airport and report back to the House in one week. Lanre Lassese, Channel Television News. The President of Senate, Dr. Bukola Saraki, today read a letter seeking the confirmation of 27 nominees for the position of Resident Electoral Commissioners Rex in the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The letter signed by the Vice President, Professor Yomi Oshibajo, in acting president capacity and dated February the 27, 2017, is asking the Senators to consider the nominees for the positions. On the list are eight former Rex who are reappointed and 19 new appointees. Some of the nominees include Mr. Mike Iguini, who had served as the REC in Edo and Cross River State, Mr. Hali Lupai, who also served as REC in Undo State, Dr. Akeju, a former REC in Kogi and Undo State, and Mr. Sam Ulumekun, who served in Edo State. The tenure of 33 RECs expired weeks ago, leaving openings for the highest positions in the state's leadership of INEC. It's unclear why the presidency transmitted 27 names, where 33 positions are currently opened. In part two after the break, Presidential Committee on Electoral Reform seeks end to post-election litigations in Nigeria, advocates electoral victories at the polls and not in court. You stay with us.